What I want to know is, where are the women? When I look at this panel, I don't see one single woman. Yeah, that was Carolyn Maloney, and she was mad, saying that in the panels, there were two panels. The first panel had all men, five men. The second panel uh, added two women to it, so there were some women in the second panel. Some Democrats walked out of that hearing. Uh, Republicans say the hearing was about religious rights, not health care, and the Democrats' witness list wasn't submitted on time. So joining us this morning to discuss this further is Congressman Elijah Cummings. He's the ranking Democrat on that committee. And the woman who is set to testify today, Sandra Fluke. She's a Georgetown University public, public interest law student who will be testifying, and she is the one who was kept from testifying. Nice to have you both with us. Uh, Congressman with Cummings, you. let me begin with you. Um, the Congressman, uh, Daryl Issa, who was running, the chairman, was running all this, and he said, listen, the, the reason that uh, Ms. Fluke was not allowed to, to testify was that she was not, quote, appropriate or qualified because the hearing was limited to questions of religious freedom. Is that accurate? That was absolutely ridiculous. Uh, this was a... Uh, hearing that was all about uh, women's uh, access to contraceptives. It was also about, of course, uh, religious freedom. But uh, again, I don't see how you could talk about religious freedom with regard to uh, women's uh, contraceptives without bringing in women. And, and yes, there were two panels, uh, by the way, but ev all of the ten witnesses that were presented uh, all favored Mr. Issa's uh, opinion. And that simply wasn't fair. We simply wanted Ms. Fluke to have an opportunity to talk about what the effects of policies that um, push back on women being able to have access to contraceptives. We wanted her to have an opportunity to talk about that. Well, we'll I'm have an opportunity. You talk about it unless you have women. Right. She's going to have a, sense. She'll have an opportunity to talk in that hearing today. The actual panel of last week was called Lines Crossed, Separation of Church and State. Or has the Obama administration trampled on freedom of religion and freedom of conscience? You have said, uh, Ms. Blake, uh, Flip, that, um, that these, this is not an, an either or, that you can be pro-Catholic and also pro-women's health. How do you mean? Explain that. Well, absolutely. Many of the women whose stories I hope to share with the committee today are Catholic women. Um, and, you know, I spoke on a panel last night along with representatives of Catholics for Choice. There are many Catholic organizations who have come out in support of this contraception policy. The Catholic Health Association, the Association of Jesuit and Catholic Universities and Colleges are, are just a few of them. So I think many Catholics don't see any contradiction, including the 98% of Catholic women who use contraception during their lives. Tell me some of the stories that you're going to be highlighting today. Some of them are, are, are very sad stories. Yes, uh, frankly, I, th I think they're all. Um, I'm going to be talking about one woman who I talked with recently who needs contraception to prevent seizures, grand mal seizures from happening several times a month. Another woman, a close friend of mine, who has polycystic ovarian syndrome, and she actually she lost an ovary because of lack of access to contraception. Uh, another woman who recently gave birth, and her obstetrician recommends that she have contraception so that she doesn't become pregnant with her husband again too soon because that would be detrimental to her health and dangerous to the life of any potential child she might carry. So women need contraception access and affordable access for many reasons, including preventing pregnancy and, and for reasons of consequences for their health. And that's why this regulation is so vitally important to and women. Congressman Cummings, some people could say, okay, all those women need contraception, they should go buy it. That the, an institution shouldn't necessarily have to foot the bill for it when they have some kind of a moral or religious uh, exception to it. Well, I think the president took that into account uh, when he came back a week or so ago and said that uh, women would be able to, to deal directly with their insurer and they, they would still get those contraceptives for free. Um, and that the, that way the religious organization is not endorsing it, not, not, nor paying for the contraceptives. But you've got to understand what's happening here. Uh, we've got a situation where there are uh, numerous bills in the Congress that are pushing back on women being able to have access to contraceptives. And one of the interesting things, they're all sponsored by men. There's something absolutely wrong with that picture. And so there's a balance here. I think the president struck a good balance. Uh, as a matter of fact, Ms. Fluke, you can see uh, she's a well-qualified witness. But at our hearing today, something that has never happened with regard to the Congress, uh, the Republicans are saying uh, we are not going to allow our recording studio to record it because they don't want to hear her testimony. So once again, uh, they're setting out uh, a woman's opportunity to speak about the effect 
of uh, policies on them. And I think that's absolutely ridiculous and very insensitive. Congressman Elijah Cummings is a Democrat from uh, Maryland, and Sandra Fluke is a Georgetown University public interest law student joining us this morning. Thanks for, uh, for joining us. We appreciate it. Good Thank to be you with for you. having us. Thank you. Still ahead.